Chapter 256, A Difficult Matter There were people lining up in front of the fruit shop every day. It was not my turn today, nor tomorrow, but it would be my turn the day after tomorrow, right? For a while, it was hard to get a melon in the capital. Those who had a good relationship with Prince Jing's estate tried everything possible to buy a watermelon. Fortunately, Princess Consort Jing wasn't in the capital or there would have been more for her to be troubled by. She was hiding in Tanga to avoid the disturbance, but it was bitter for Prince Jing. Imagine always being blocked at the entrance of the court hall after getting off court every day. Even those incidental acquaintances all came up to try to exploit their connection with him by acting friendly. Also they could buy some stupid watermelon. When did so many of his colleagues turn into foodies? Your Highness Imperial Prince Jing, please stay Prince Jing, who was rejoicing that there was no one waiting for him in front of the court, had decided to leave before the people behind him came out. Unexpectedly, a familiar voice stopped him. Looking back. It turned out to be the iron-faced Prime Minister, Yuan Mu Fan, one. The two of them had no connection in the past. Due to a radical and steady difference in their political opinions, they often competed in court until their faces and ears were red. When meeting out of court, they kept up appearances of incidental acquaintances. Prime Minister Yuan wasn't usually someone who paid attention to the desires of food, so why was he stopping him? Yuan Mufan face was slightly red from Prince Jing's confused gaze. He coughed to cover up his embarrassment. If possible, he didn't want to ask others for help. Moreover, it was for such an unspeakable reason. But, he had no other choice since filial piety was greater than the heavens. In order to get his father stay in the capital for a few more days, and let him, as a son, show filial piety, he was willing to risk being embarrassed. Let talk somewhere quieter. Prime Minister Yuan took Imperial Prince Jing to a nearby tea house. He asked for a private room and ordered a pot of quality tea. Prince Jing took a sip of tea and dismissed the server making the tea. Seeing that Prime Minister Yuan wouldn't speak, he asked directly, What is the problem, Prime Minister Yuan? If there is anything I can help you with, I definitely will. Imperial Prince Jing inherited the retired emperor's frank personality and hated the garrulous straits of the scholars. Prime Minister Yuan gritted his teeth and said what he wanted in one breath. It turned out that the Prime Minister's father, the great scholar Yuan Sinian, was finally back in the capital. After living in his son's house for a short while, he insisted on returning to Tanga Town, upon hearing that there wasn't a place selling watermelons in the capital. He kept saying, that Lascia cow's watermelons should be ripe now. I haven't had that girl's braised pig's head meat in so long. I wonder what kind of specialty she created for her brother this week. The only thing he thought about was food. The Prime Minister's youngest son, Yuan Yangtze, came back to the capital to prepare for the autumn examination. Our headmaster Yuan originally agreed that he would wait until his grandson finished his exams before going back to Tanga Town. Even so, he couldn't sit still as soon as he heard about watermelon. He had already sent people to Tanga Town to buy some, but the time it took to make the trip and come back was at least five or six days. However, his father was becoming more and more impatient. It was no wonder that people said one's temper would become more like a child's as one got older. Your Highness, can you please give me two watermelons from your fruit shop? His face was red with shame. It had never occurred to Prime Minister Yuan that he would have to go ask someone for watermelons one day. For the sake of his beloved wife's fruit shop, Prince Jing had been utterly exhausted recently. In his opinion, if he quickly sold all those troublesome watermelons, then he wouldn't have to think about it and he wouldn't be offending anyone. Prime Minister Yuan's character had always been very upright and his filial piety for his father couldn't be more commendable. Imperial Prince Jing couldn't refuse him, so he readily agreed. With two watermelons, the iron-faced Prime Minister would owe him a favor. It was a good deal ah. Go to the Princess Consort's fruit shop and take two watermelons to the Prime Minister's estate. Remember. Don't go in through the front and get it from the back of the store. Just say that it's this prince's order. He immediately ordered his bodyguard. Prime Minister Yuan cupped his hands and bowed gratefully at him. Prince Jing lowered his head and took a sip of tea. Putting down his cup, he said, Brother Yuan, if there isn't anything else. Thank you very much, 
Your Highness, I will prepare some good wine one day, please come then, Prince Jing. Prime Minister Yuan also was in a hurry to get back to his estate to see if his father throwing a tantrum about wanting to go back to Tanga Town again. After Imperial Prince Jing left, Prime Minister Yuan didn't stay for long before hurrying back to his estate. As expected, our headmaster Yuan, who had a small baggage in his hand, was impatiently letting someone prepare a carriage to take him back to Tanga Town, regardless of how others tried to stop him. Seeing that his grandfather's stubborn temper was acting up again, Yuan Yunxi didn't dare to try too hard to stop him. He just said, Grandfather, I have already sent people to line up to buy watermelons. If you leave today, you won't be able to eat the watermelons. Once I get to Tanga Town and tell the Lasksia cow, I can eat as much watermelons as I want. Why do I wait in line for two days for one watermelon? It's not even my turn to. Yu An Sinian heard that a batch of watermelons were shipped to the capital from Tanga Town two days ago, so he happily sent people to go buy them. In the end, since the shop was backed by Imperial Prince Jing, they didn't have to show respect to Prime Minister's estate. After waiting for two days and not even getting a watermelon peel, Yu An Sinian was extremely angry. Once he was back in Tanga Town, he would buy a lot of watermelons, one to eat, one to throw away and one to use as a ball to kick. Grandfather, it's our turn to eat in the private room of Zenxiu restaurant. If you leave, you won't be able to eat the food there. Yuan Yangxi, who grew up beside his grandfather, naturally understood his foodie nature. If he wanted him to stay, he had to use food as the offensive. Yuan Sinian became even angrier at the mention of the capital's Zenxiu restaurant. His beard was blowing as he said. The kid from the Z family isn't very loyal to go so far as to not leave me a personal private room, and I have to wait in line to eat in the private room. In Tanga Town, as long as the Lassie cow says something, I can go eat whenever I want, what need is there for me to line up? Yuxia cow's position in Tanga's Zenxi Uristu R and was equivalent to that of half a boss. Thus, she had her own private room. She didn't need to wait in line to eat or to entertain guests. However, there were very few opportunities for her to go eat, and she didn't have many friends who could make her treat them at Zenxiu restaurant, so the room was usually left unused. When Yuxiaka went to deliver food to her younger brother, she would always give his benefactor, Headmaster Yuan, a share. Once, she heard the cute old foodie complain that he couldn't get a place to eat in the Zenxiu restaurant, so she generously lent her private room to him. In other words, Headmaster Yuan could freely use Xiaokao's private room in Zenxiu restaurant whenever she wasn't using it, which was the same as Headmaster Yuan having an appointment-free private room in Zenxiu restaurant. This allowed the little old man to show off in front of his friends for a while. At Zenxiu restaurant, Besides the Zhu family, only Xiaokao had an exclusive private room. How enviable was it to be able to eat at Zhenxiu restaurant without having to wait in line and without reservation? Headmaster Yuan felt smug for a while due to the envious gazes of his friends. After arriving in the capital, all the preferential treatment disappeared. Headmaster Yuan felt disappointed. Just when Yuan Sinian was persistent on leaving, Prime Minister Yuan arrived with the man who was delivering the watermelons. Father, the watermelons have been bought. I must try the watermelons that father has been praising. How would it taste? With a gentle smile on his face, Prime Minister Yuan didn't seem to see the small baggage in his father's hand and had someone carry the watermelons into the reception hall of outer courtyard. Yuan Sinian recognized that the watermelons in the servants' hands were planted by the Yu family with a glance. The watermelons in the capital were small and unpalatable. For watermelons, he still had to eat those of Tanga's Yu families. Upon seeing the watermelons, he seemed to have forgotten he was going back to Tangu. His feet were automatically and spontaneously attracted to the watermelons. When Yuan Sinian heard his son's words, he hummed and said, when you eat it, you will understand. At that time, you can't steal mine. Prime Minister Yuan's mind was at a loss whether to cry or laugh. Do you think I'm the same as you? In the capital, 
watermelons were cut from the middle and eaten with a spoon. Yuan Sinian was instructing the servants in high spirits on how to cut the watermelons into triangular pieces. Unable to hold himself back, he took a piece and bit into it. Yes, that's the taste. Sweet to the heart. From the corner of his eye, he saw his son's surprised expression. He said nonchalantly, unfortunately, the watermelon isn't as fresh. If it was just picked from the ground, it's crisper and sweeter. After finishing one piece, he saw that his son was taking another piece and hurriedly stopped him. Didn't you say you wouldn't steal mine? Trying one piece is enough. How can you be addicted already? Prime Minister Yuan looked at the watermelon that weighed at least 15 or 16 catties and replied in a helpless manner, Father, you can't eat such a big watermelon alone. If you eat watermelon that has been left out for a long time after being cut, you will get a stomachache. Yuan Sinian glares at him and said to Yuan Yangtze, Yangtze, send half to your mother and sisters-in-law in the back courtyard and let them taste it. Watermelons are cooled in nature, so tell your sisters-in-law to be careful and don't let the children eat too much. Yuan Yangtze was the youngest son in the family. He had just turned 17 years old this year. He had two older brothers and two older sisters. Both of his brothers were married and had children and both sisters had also gotten married. His eldest brother's child had just turned three, and was especially cute at this time. Headmaster Yuan, being a great grandfather, would think about the little guy whenever he had some delicious food. Yuan Yangtze's brothers had jokingly said that only this little guy, whose hair hadn't even grown in yet, could snatch food from the lion's mouth. Because of these two watermelons, the Prime Minister's household managed to keep the old urchin, who had been crying to go back to Tanga Town, from leaving. However, Royal Prince Yang, who was in Tanga Town, didn't realize the trouble he had caused his father just because he wanted to make some convenient pocket money. Later, Prince Jing wrote a letter to Princess Consort Jing and ruthlessly complained about his youngest son, Royal Prince Yang, at this moment was sitting in a garden full of vegetables, drinking tea and enjoying the sight of new greenery. In contrast to his leisure, poor Yuxiakao was working hard in the kitchen due to the great Buddha in the yard. Yuxiakao, this prince wants to eat tomatoes. At the end of spring, there weren't many fruits to eat. The Yu family's tomatoes were sour, sweet and juicy, which tasted better than many of the fruits that Zijun Yang had eaten. These days, Zijun Yang used the excuse of official business to come to the Yu's house to eat every day. This guy's mouth was very picky, if Yu Xiaokao didn't personally cook, then he would always find something wrong with the food. The village head, who wished he could put up offerings for this guy, repeatedly asked her to treat the royal prince well. Chapter 257, Great Buddha Yu Xiaokao, who was making honey abalone angrily shouted at him, if you want to eat it, then go and pick it yourself. All right. Today, when Royal Prince Yang saw the abalones that were drying out in their yard, he casually ordered the dish honey abalone. Yuxia Kao finally had a chance to go into the sea to help third young masters prepare the portions needed for the palace next month. All that hard work was ruined by his one word it looked like she would have to go into the sea again these few days. Madame Liu, who was acting as an assistant, glanced at her and whispered, the other person is a royal prince a member of the imperial family. Just because he has a good temper, it doesn't mean you can take advantage of it. Regardless of his identity, the visitor is a guest. If the guest has any requests, the host should try to satisfy them. That is hospitality. After scolding her daughter a few times, Madame Liu put a piece of firewood in the stove and stood up. She walked over to the kitchen door and said, Our family's car has a childish temper. Please don't take offense. I'll go help you pick. Zijun Yang was also curious about the vegetable plots in the backyard. He put down his cup, slowly stood up, and said to Madame Liu, No need. I'm currently idle and have nothing to do. I'll go to the backyard and take a look. Go ahead and continue your work. Zijun Yang left the capital on the orders of the emperor this time. He could stay until the corn and potatoes were ripe. Therefore, head steward Liu, who closely served him, also came. What did it mean to closely serve? Naturally, it meant that he will be wherever the master went. Master, let this old servant go pick it. Although the royal prince still only had one expression on his face, that is to say, 
there was no expression, head steward Liu could hear his master's politeness toward Madame Liu from his tone. His master never said false words to people. There were no exceptions, even for the so-called noble-ranked women of the capital. Why did the prince make an exception for this Madame Liu, who was just a country woman? For the past few days, Head Seward Liu observed that it was not only Madame Liu that his master treated differently. What did the Liu family have for the prince to regard them specially? Could it be the matter of Yu Hai saving the master's life? That didn't seem right. Before the prince went out to sea, he had already met the Liu family at the pier. At that time, he still had a cold and cool attitude and didn't pay them any attention. Was it possibly because the Liu family had helped the prince with his problems, and could grow corn and potatoes? The men under the master were much more capable and had made outstanding contributions, yet the master never praised them for doing a good job. Just what magic potion did the Yu family give his master? Head steward Liu was just in the middle of puzzling, and his master had already passed through the round doors into the backyard, coming to a more open vegetable field. Unlike the leafy green vegetables planted in the front yard, the vegetables in the backyard were more abundant. On the surrounding walls, there were many sponge gourds with yellow flowers on them. On rows of bamboo racks, there are long fresh green beans, jade green cucumbers, fresh and tender color bushes, and golden pumpkins in the well-planned vegetable field. The purple eggplants had a mysterious luster in the sunlight, the red and green pointy peppers covered the branches, and the tomatoes were like little lanterns sticking out of the leaves. The entire backyard was filled with the joys of harvest. Seeing that his master's cold personality was gradually warming up, head steward Liu was rather relieved. It seemed that the master had an affinity for the rural scenery. Maybe after staying here for a while, the master will gradually turn back into the carefree little boy from when he was a child. While head steward Liu was moved to the point that his nose tingled, Zhejun Yang had picked a tender cucumber from the cucumber rack and chewed it up in his mouth. As soon as head steward Liu saw it, he hurried forward, Master, let this servant wash it for you before you eat it. No need, I saw you Xia Kao eat it like this last time. Zhejun Yang took another bite. The crispy and tender cucumber was full of juice, refreshing and thirst quenching. That little girl is used to living in the countryside. If she eats unclean food, it's all right, master, you are delicate and pampered. If you get a stomachache, what will we do? Head steward Liu said in his mind. At this time, Zhejun Yang came to the tomato field. Searching carefully, he finally found a red and colorful tomato under a cluster of thick leaves. The Yu family didn't have to worry about selling their vegetables. There were many carriages that came to buy them every day. Tomatoes can be eaten raw or cooked. Naturally, they were one of the more popular vegetables for the rich people in town. To be able to find one or two out of the vegetable fields that didn't get sold was considered lucky already. Zhejun Yang could care less about his new shoes that were dirtied by the newly watered soil. With a sense of achievement, he found five ripe tomatoes in the tomato field. He returned from the backyard content, with a tomato in his mouth and the rest in his pocket. He looked very casual and at ease. He stomped the dirt off his feet and stomped toward the kitchen instead of sitting at the stone table. He rushed inside and hurriedly said to the busy Yuxiakao, Yuxiakao, I want to eat scrambled eggs with tomatoes. Yuxiakao, who was struggling with the honey abalone, didn't seem to hear him as she was trying to mix the sauce over and over again. Yuxiakao didn't know how to make everything. In her previous life, she had made a lot of homemade dishes and she had some talent at cooking, so naturally, the taste of the food was quite good. However, abalone was very precious and her home wasn't near the sea in her previous life, so she hadn't seen much abalone, let alone cooked with it. Thankfully, the current head chef of Zhengxi Uri Stu Arant, Yang Feng, who was also the apprentice of the previous head chef Wang, once made honey abalone in front of her. It didn't look hard when she saw him make it, so why was it so hard now that she was making it? Yuxiakao, I'm talking to you. Are you deaf or mute? Ever since he had further contact with the Yu family, Zhejun Yang had also become more and more impolite with Yuxiakao. He used to politely call her Miss Yu. Now, he not only called her directly by her given name, but he also ordered her like she was his servant. He always commanded her to do either this or that. 
Yuxia Cao was almost annoyed to death by him. Neither deaf nor mute, the cook can't be distracted while cooking, otherwise, the food that comes out won't be edible. Young royal prince, go stay where you are supposed to stay. Yuxia Cao had also found out the truth about the young royal prince's temper. He looked ruthless, but he wasn't actually that aloof and didn't seem that bad tempered. At least, after being in contact with him so much, she had never seen him really lose his temper. Yuxia Kao, who didn't have the consciousness of someone from the lower class, was speaking more impolitely to him the more tired she became. Madame Liu and the rest of the family broke out in cold sweat from her antics from time to time. The royal prince looked young but he wasn't easy to get along with. If she infuriated the royal prince, getting hit with wooden planks would be the lightest punishment she would receive while losing her life could be the harshest punishment. Wasn't this how the plays always turned out? Their little daughter was really brave to challenge the royal prince's bottom line over and over again. I think the kitchen is a pretty good place. Staying here wouldn't be bad. Zhejun Liang didn't get angry and even made a rare joke. Head steward Liu was so surprised that his chin could have dropped to the ground and hit his foot. This was this the cold-faced prince who scared children into crying and the one who wouldn't allow strangers close to him. When did he change his personality? Ah, Yuxia Kao was speechless for a moment. All right. If you're not afraid of breathing in oily smoke, then you can stay all you like. Zhejun Yang watched as she poured the sauce for the third time and couldn't help but say, there are dishes that you can't make. Actually, I'm not actually that picky. When I was on the boat, I even ate raw fish. Don't be nervous, just cook it until it's not raw anymore. I won't think what you made is bad. In truth, he only said that because he didn't want her to keep attempting only to face failure again and again. Yet, the words that came out of his mouth still made her want to beat him up. Yuxia Kao ignored him and finally blended the flavor that she wanted. Only then did she peel the abalone's, wash, and scored them with cross-shaped lines on top. Next, she put them in a bowl and added egg whites and starch before evenly mixing it together. She then steamed the abalone's for a few minutes in the pot. The abalone's she caught was on the larger side so they needed to be steamed longer before they were cooked all the way through. She cleaned the fresh mushrooms that she found from the coral, cut them into small pieces, and quickly blanched them in boiling water before taking them out. Then, she sautéed them in oil with ginger, scallion, and garlic. Afterwards, she added the seasoning she had just mixed using savory broth, salt, pepper, message, and sesame oil and simmered the whole mixture into a thick sauce. After the abalone was steamed, she poured the sauce on top. The sweet-smelling honey abalone was finally done. It smells authentic, I wonder how it will taste. Zhejun Liang gently sniffed the fragrance floating in the air and praised. Yuxia Kao walked over to him and took the tomato from his hand. She rolled her eyes and said, This is my first time making it so I can't guarantee if the taste is good or bad. Make do with it and eat it. Young royal prince, our family is just an ordinary family. In the future, can you please not order dishes with abalones or sea cucumbers? Oh, are you complaining to me? Your family is just ordinary farmers. Yet 10 carts of vegetables and 7 to 8 carts of watermelons are sold every day. Even if a business in town is booming, their monthly income can't match the money your family is making in a day. I just ate some of your abalones and your heart is already hurting. Stingy. In front of Yu Xiaokao, Zhejun Yang was no longer the cold-faced prince with few words, one wrong move and he could become a chatterbox. Head steward Liu had a frightened expression. He couldn't have followed a fake prince, right? Yuxia Kao had a glib tongue, so of course, she wouldn't lose to him, young royal prince, we are only making money these past few days. Watermelon is only in season for at most one more month, with just vegetables, how much money can we earn? We, the common people, depend on the weather for food. When we have money, we have to think about the days when we won't have any money. Unlike you, your salary isn't going down while you are walking around and freeloading meals off of people. You have a royal occupation, so how can you know the sufferings of the common people are? Zhejun Liang knew about the Yu family's situation. When they hadn't separated from the main family, they didn't have enough to eat or wear and had to work and be scolded thinking of this lass being on the verge of dying several times due to serious illnesses. A tender and protective feeling rose from his heart. 
Zijun Yang softly said, Don't worry, as long as the corn and potatoes grow well, the imperial court definitely won't treat you badly. With your family's talent in farming, I can help put in some good words with the emperor. Maybe, he'll approve you to be an agricultural official. At that time, you guys can also eat public meals and receive an imperial salary. No, please don't. Yuxia Cao's face was so frightened as if he were a monster. Stepping to the side a bit, she continued, Young royal prince, I know that you are trying to be kind, but as, common people, have no roots or foundations in the imperial court. Even if we become a small official, in the ranks of the court, we are still cannon fodder. Let's not do this, all right? Chapter 258, Change it. Who said you guys had no roots? I will be your backer. Who would dare to touch my people? With a cold face, Zijun Yang started emitting cold air. However, he was interested in the words cannon fodder. He wanted to ask what they meant but he was afraid the little lass would say that he was ignorant, so he stayed silent. Yes, yes, yes. You are powerful. No matter how powerful you are, you still have to eat right. Here, scrambled eggs with tomatoes. While talking, Yuxia Cow had quickly cooked up the last dish. Just as she was about to bring it over to the stone table in the courtyard, Zijun Yang, that door god, blocked the way, so she slipped the vegetables into his hands. Zijun Yang looked down at the bright red and golden scrambled eggs with tomato, and then looked at Xia Cow who had turned around to scoop out the rice. What does she mean? Is she telling me to take the dishes out for her? This lass's courage is growing bigger and bigger. She even dares to order this prince around. When head steward Liu saw this, his expression changed and he hurriedly rushed over to take the dish out of his master's hands. Head steward Liu's heart shuddered and he thought, my little ancestor, how can you order the royal prince to take the dishes? Isn't this just asking a venerable old man to go hang himself, to go seek death? Unexpectedly, his master didn't appreciate his actions and dodged his hands. He carried the plate in one hand, held his other hand elegantly behind his back and walked out of the kitchen. Get out of the way, here comes the rice. Yuxia Cao's voice rang out just as Zijun Yang set the dish of scrambled eggs with tomatoes down on the table. When he turned around, he saw that the lass, as if she was doing acrobatics, holding a big bowl of rice in one hand and had a teetering plate on top of two adjacent bowls in the other hand. Without thinking, Zijun Yang reached out and took the plate of stir-fried spoon worms with chives on top. As if he had seen something extraordinary, head steward Liu's eyes almost fell out of his eye socket. They could say the dish just now was given by Miss Yu, so his master just brought it out. However, his master actually took the initiative to help Miss Yu with the dishes. This this should they check to see if the master had been substituted by someone? When Yu Xia Cao passed by head steward Liu, he grabbed her and quietly whispered, Miss Yu, if you have any work, feel free to tell me. Don't be embarrassed about it. Yu Xia Cao saw that most of the dishes were already brought out so she waved her hand and said with a smile, there's nothing for you to do. You can just sit and wait to eat the meal. How could the servant just sit and wait to eat? while the master serves the food. Did he still want to live? Young royal prince, do you want to have steamed buns or rice? Head steward Liu wanted to say something else, but he was interrupted by the clear and melodious voice of Yu Xiaokao. Seeing that his master had looked over, and even glared at him, head steward Liu tactfully closed his mouth. Not only was Zijun Yang not angry at Xiaokao for letting him bring out the dishes, but he also thought it was a new experience. Dot when eating at home, there were usually people serving them, so it looked comfortable and relaxed. But, in fact, there was a lack of ambience. Unlike his family, even Yu Hai, who came back from the fields, helped distribute the bowls and chopsticks. The feeling of the whole family working together gave off an overflowing sense of warmth. After helping bring out the two dishes, Zijun Yang suddenly felt he was no longer a high-ranking prince nor the enviable third son of Prince Jing, but instead he had integrated into the warm family and became a part of them. You guys, there's no need for a separate table. Just eat with this prince. Zijun Yang expressed an it's a great honor for you to eat dinner with me attitude. In actuality, he had longed for the atmosphere of smiling and talking while eating, like the Yu family. Yu Hai was going to decline. 
but Yuxiaka wasn't going to act courteous with him. She merged the two tables of dishes into one, and quickly set up the stools. Zijun Yang looked Yu Hai and blocked his words of refusal with a simple, sit down. Head steward Liu was numb already. Ever since coming to Dongshan village, the master had become less and less like himself. Looking at the little master, whom he had watched grow up, he felt that, with the Yu family, the master felt more and more human. This didn't seem to be a bad thing. You don't need to wait on me here, go eat. Zijun Yang saw head steward Liu standing behind him, holding chopsticks and ready to try the dishes for poison, so he sent him away. Head steward Liu's eyes became tearful, he could finally eat a hot meal. The Yu family's meals were all cooked in one pot, there was a portion set aside for him from every dish. Head steward Liu usually insisted on serving the master himself, so by the time it was his turn to eat, the food had already gotten cold. Head steward Liu was old and his stomach wasn't as good as when he was young. After a cold meal, he would always have a dull pain in his stomach. When he was in the estate, it wasn't as bad. As the head steward, his disciples and followers, who had a good eye for things, would help him heat the food. However, when he got to Dongshan village, the master didn't even want to bring him along, much less other people. Head steward Liu could only bear it. He looked worried at the young master, who was eating and sitting among the Yu family, and discovered that the master was able to do as they were doing, happily eating. Head steward Liu finally felt relieved and sat down at the wooden table on the side and slowly ate. Father, didn't third young master Zhu take over the supply of dried seafood for the imperial palace? He wants to make a contract with us. All the high-grade abalonian sea cucumber we catch in the future will be sold to the Zhu family. They'll buy it at a high price. The Yu family didn't have rules where they couldn't talk while eating. They were usually busy with their own matters, so they could only get together when they eat. Due to this, they always talked about their matters at the dinner table. Yu Hai glanced at the royal prince who was seriously eating his meal, and cautiously said, even if we don't make a contract with the Zhu family, with their care for us, we can still sell the high-grade seafood to his family. In Yu Hai's opinion, the Zhu family really did treat them well. When they hadn't separated their families yet, the Zhu family paid high prices for their quarry. When opening the factories and hiring workers, they trusted them to help. Also, the business of collecting spoonworms and oysters allowed them to earn them quite a bit of money in one year. In his honest opinion, if they took care of his family like this, then if he had something good, he naturally would think of them as well. It's just that the high-grade abalones and sea cucumbers aren't easy to come across. There's a family can't just rely on our family you high thought his swimming skill was pretty good but he still wasn't sure about being able to catch abalones and sea cucumbers. Don't worry, they definitely won't just rely on to us. Let's just try our best. Father, my swimming skills is pretty good now, I can go to help you. You? No way. How many times have you been in the sea? The deep sea has many dangers, not only do your swimming skills have to be good, but you also need to have good physical strength. If you run out of energy in the middle of a dive, no one will help you, it's too dangerous. Yu Hai adamantly refused. Zijun Yang glanced at Yuxia Kao and couldn't help saying, the sea isn't for horsing around. In the future, don't go into the sea so often. Yuxia Kao glared at him. With bad intentions, she gave him a chopstick full of chives. She smiled and innocently said, young royal prince, Try the stir-fried spoonworms with chives. It's delicious. During these past few days, Yuxia Kao had noticed that the cold young royal prince's mouth was very picky. He didn't touch vegetables like chives, onions, and garlic that had a strong taste at all. Seeing that the young royal prince was gradually furrowing his brows as he looked at the chives in his bowl, Yuxia Kao felt very proud of herself. Humphrey, we are talking about family matters. What are you cutting in for? Ha! Huh? Serves you right. Zijun Yang stared at the chives in the bowl as if he were going to war with it. After looking for a long time, he finally moved. He stuffed all the chives into his mouth, drank a big mouthful of soup, and directly swallowed without chewing. Humphrey, this lass must have done it on purpose. Zijun Yang glared at Yuxia Kao. Returning her kindness, he picked up some shredded ginger and put them in Yuxia Kao's bowl. Zijun Yang had long noticed that every time that lass eats a meal, 
She always picked out the ginger and put them on the table. Seeing that the little girl was up to her old tricks of picking out the shredded ginger, Zijun Yang said with great dignity, it's this prince's first time picking up food and giving it to another person. This is a great honor to you, so you must eat it and not throw it away. Otherwise, Humphrey, don't blame me for punishing you. Humphrey, seeking revenge for such a small grievance. Yuxia Cao's thoughts were full of complaints toward him. She mixed the shredded ginger with the rice and ate it with a bitter face. Zijun Yang and Yuxia Cao were even now. Yu Hang looked at his younger sister's dissatisfied expression, which looked like she wanted to continue provoking him. Thus, he hurriedly touched her with his feet under the table. His youngest sister's courage was really too big. Who was the person sitting across the table? The great Ming dynasty's royal prince Yang, a member of the royal family. We, ordinary people, couldn't wait to put up offerings for him or hide from him, yet why was she constantly looking for trouble? Receiving her older brother's warning, Yuxia Kao pouted and picked at her eyes. Her little mouth was like a bloated frog trying to hold itself up. Zijun Yang gazed at the little girl with a hint of a smile. In this way, Royal Prince Yang came to inspect Dongshan village every three or five days, saying it was to record the growth data of corn and potatoes. In reality, his ulterior motive was the food and warm atmosphere of the Yu family. Princess Consort Jing was also aware of the changes in her youngest son. Her youngest son used to be indifferent to everything except her his mother. It was like he was isolating himself in a circle and choosing endless loneliness as his company. Princess Consort Jing always felt that if it continued like this, she would eventually lose her son. These days, her son seemed to be busy, diligently running to Dongshan village. Every day, he would head out early in the morning and come back at night. Where did he eat lunch? Did she even need to ask? Her youngest son had been a picky eater since he was a child. He would never eat anything that didn't suit his taste. Besides that little girl of the U family, who else would have that talent? After a few days, her son's thin cheeks were filling out more and more every day. Although he still seemed cold and indifferent, that uncomfortable deathly aura of his was slowly dissipating, making him look more human. She wasn't saying that her son wasn't human, but like a 10,000 year old cold iron, her youngest son used to be a big block of ice making it hard for people to get close. Now, he was becoming more affectionate and talkative. He talked more and more frequently about the little girl of the U family. Chapter 259, Mutual Dislike. The days went by, one after another, and spring slowly walked to its end. The start of summer was imminent. The U family's cornfields all had stalks of corn standing up straight like soldiers. Each leaf from the stalks of corn looked like a finely crafted sharp sword made from the finest green jasper, all so perfect that it looked like it was from the heavens. At the apex of the stalks, there was a tassel of male flowers, and they bunched around, looking like messy hair on the bodyguards. For the past month, because Royal Prince Yang was particularly diligent and came by often, Xia Kao lessened the amount of mystic stone water she used to avoid rousing his suspicions. Corn had always been a drought-resistant crop that feared floods. Even though there was less spring rain this year, it didn't influence the growth of the corn at all. Zijun Yang looked at the corn plants that were as tall as a man and had head steward Liu, one, who accompanied him. Record what the male flowers looked like and the time period that they had appeared during the growth cycle. The Yu family's watermelons had been on the market for almost a month, so there wasn't a lot left in the six mu of fields. The leftover watermelons weren't very large, but their taste was not compromised. Zijun Yang strolled into the watermelon fields and stooped down to pick one out of the remaining melons. He had steward Liu hold on to it as they headed back to enjoy it. Behind them. Yuxia Kao, who acted as their little assistant, curled her lips. This young royal prince truly didn't consider himself to be an outsider anymore. He picked the watermelons as if they were his own things. Yuxia Kao, can the male flowers that grow at the top of the corn plants also produce fruit? Zijun Yang remembered the news he had gotten from the capital. The Ministry of Revenue had followed the methods that the family had come up with to grow corn. It had been about a month and they were only now jointing. He had looked at the specimens sent over. Although they looked quite good, 
they still were quite inferior to the ones grown by the U family. Could it really be true that the U family had more talent at cultivating crops than other people? Yuxia Kao rolled her eyes at him and rudely replied, those who are ignorant are seriously too scary. People are split into men and women, flowers are the same. Since these are male flowers, how could they possibly bear fruit? Ah, thwap, Zijun Yang lightly used the palm of his hand to slap the back of the little lass's head. The tone of his voice didn't have a hint of intimidation as he stated, you're quite a bold little thing. Who are you accusing of being ignorant now? Looks like this prince normally indulges you too much. You are truly too cheeky now. You're lucky that I'm a magnanimous person. If it was anyone else, you would have lost your little life already. Steward Liu, who was standing at the side with a notebook in his hand and the watermelon in the other, looked at the faint smile on his young master's face. He felt immensely comforted inside. The heavens have eyes. They allowed my master to meet the only person who dares to joke with him, the harmonious and sweet Miss Yu. Throughout this past month, he had observed the two and discovered that his master could only wholeheartedly relax when he was with Miss Yu. This was the only time that his master would occasionally show the appearance and mannerisms of a 17-year-old youth. Yuxia Kao held her head as she angrily stared at him. She raged. You hit my head again. If you end up causing me to become stupid and an idiot. From this, I'm going to make you take responsibility. You absolutely need to take care of me for the rest of my life. Be responsible for the rest of this little lass's life. A hint of laughter appeared in the depths of Zijun Yang's eyes. He gave her an already peeled chestnut and guffawed. Stop trying to falsely accuse this prince. You've always been a stupid idiot. How can you blame me for this? You want to make me take responsibility? This prince is not a stingy person. With your tiny stature, someone who eats as much as a kitten, this prince can afford to raise dozens of you. Do you think you're raising pigs are? You even want dozens Yuxia Kao accidentally insulted herself and she only realized it when the words came out of her mouth. Hey, uh, how did this happen? Did she really become stupid after getting hit by this guy? The smile on Zijun Yang's face widened and he looked at her from top to bottom. He revealed an expression full of disdain, pigs. Your figure is so slight and small, with no meat on it. If you were a pig, you'd be a skinny piglet. I'm pretty sure no one would want to take such a skinny piglet home to raise. This prince will be merciful and tackle such a difficult job of raising such a skinny piglet. Once you become more plump, I can slaughter you for meat. Yuxia Kao hopped up and down in rage as she snarled, eat, eat, eat. You eat until you burst open. And you still want to eat meat. Be careful that you don't eat so much that you become a big, fat pig and you can't even walk anymore. This prince exercises every day, so it doesn't matter how much meat I eat, I won't get fat. No need to worry. The more he looked at Yuxia Kao hopping up and down with a lively spirit, the better his mood became. This private argument seemed to be going nowhere. Yuxia Kao decided that a good woman never fought with a man. She walked into the melon fields to find a ripe watermelon. Suddenly, a dark shadow scuttled by her feet. It scared her that she let out a cry in surprise and jumped a few feet to the side. What's wrong? What's wrong? What happened? Zijun Yang took giant steps forward and quickly arrived by her side. Because he was in such a rush. He had accidentally smashed a couple small watermelons that weren't yet ripe under his feet. It looked like a badger. The badger that Yuxia Kao talked about was very similar to the badger-like creature that was written by Lugzun, too. It was good at digging and lived in a cave in the mountains and fields. It liked to eat plants and vines but also ate insects and some other small animals. Zijun Yang searched through the melon field and spotted the nimble little creature not long after. His hand flashed quickly and the badger that was scurrying away quickly let out a short scream before it fell onto the ground, unmoving. Wow! What sort of nifty concealed weapon did he have? Yuxia Kao picked up her skirts and gracefully stepped over every melon before she arrived at the dead as Dornail Badger. The badger didn't have any signs of a large wound on its body. Instead, it only had a mark of being hit on its head. She carefully looked around the surrounding area and finally found the so-called concealed weapon. It was an ornamental thumb ring made of turtle shell. He was able to hit a badger so hard that it died from such a far distance. Furthermore, 
the turtle shell thumb ring didn't look damaged at all. His strength and dexterity was not something a normal person could compare to. Yuxiakao held the turtle shell thumb ring in one hand while the other hand lifted up that badger, who had stepped into disaster just by walking by. She walked back to Zhejiangyang's side and regarded him with eyes that glowed with admiration. Young royal prince, you know martial arts. Is this the legendary inner power R? Under the undisguised admiration in those brilliant gem-like eyes, Zhejun Yang felt his ears grow hot. He pretended to be calm and icy as he replied, This prince has studied martial arts since I was young. What's so weird about knowing martial arts? I only killed a badger, nothing to be proud of, right? He he, young royal prince. If you're ever unemployed in the future, then you can change professions and become a hunter. You absolutely won't starve to death. Yuxia Kao picked up the fat and plump badger and waved it in front of Zhejun Yang. She revealed a row of tiny white teeth, today, we'll eat this badger for lunch. Zhejun Yang frowned as he looked at the coal black badger with a look of dislike. He curled his lips, such an ugly creature, and dirty to boot is edible. It was as if the admiration and worship in her eyes were only a misperception. Yuxiakao regarded him with dislike again, inexperienced and ignorant. Let me tell you, a badger's meat is very nourishing. If you eat it frequently, you can strengthen your body. Zhejun Yang seemed to really enjoy crossing verbal swords with Yuxiakao. A stinky badger can make you this happy ah. Don't you guys have a lot of game in the West Mountains ah? On another day, this prince will let you experience my astounding hunting efficiency. At that time, make sure you tell me what you want to eat, this prince will get it for you. Yuxiakao's eyes immediately brightened, is that true? You're not pulling my leg, right? Whatever I want to eat, you'll get ah. Zhejun Yang glanced at the devious smile at the corner of Yuxiakao's lips and he had a bad premonition. However, as a manly man, he couldn't go back on his words. He could only brace himself and say, as long as the West Mountains have it, this prince will definitely be able to hunt it down. I want to eat tiger meat, the paw of the black bear, leopard's tail, shark meat. I have never eaten any of these, so I really want to try some ah. Yuxia Kao put on a fake innocent expression on her face. How come it seemed like she was really asking for a spanking? The muscles on Zhejun Yang's face fiercely twitched as he let out a strained smile. I think you've bitten more off than you can chew, eh? You dare to instigate me, this prince, to go hunt ferocious beasts, eh? What are your intentions? Furthermore, do you guys truly have sharks that live up in the West Mountains? Let alone shark. Getting you some fish up there isn't bad either. Yuxia Kao made a funny face at him. She was only idly saying stuff. How could she possibly make him take such a dangerous risk? Yuxia Kao, do the West Mountains really have tigers and leopards? Men seemed to love to take risks. Zhejun Yang had missed the annual autumn imperial hunt, and he heard of one of the generals under his command taking his thunder. He felt quite uncomfortable. It was said that that fellow had been quite lucky and had come across an injured tiger. A blind cat had hit a dead mouse, yet it allowed him to win. If the West Mountains had tigers, he wanted to hunt one down and let all of those generals underneath him recognize him for his prowess. Yuxia Kao thought for a bit and shook her head. I am also not sure. I heard the older generation say that they had once heard the roar of a tiger. Most of the fierce beasts live deep within the mountains and the vast majority of people don't dare to go in there, so it's natural that no one has seen any. However, I do know that bears live in there. My father had met one before he had almost lost his life from that bear. Yuxia Kao gripped her fists tightly when she remembered that scene again. Her father had been lying on the bed and the doctor had given him a death sentence. Everyone around them had a look of despair on their faces. She gripped her hands so tightly that the turtle shell ornamental thumb ring cut painfully into her palm. Yuxia Kao looked down at the object in her hand and said, here's your ornamental thumb ring. She displayed it in front of Zhejun Yang. Zhejun Yang looked at the imprint on Yuxia Kao's palm and also recalled Yu Hai's previous misfortune. At that time. Yuxia Kao was only eight years old and must have felt very helpless and worried. He wanted to say something to comfort her yet he didn't know what was right to say. He thought for a bit and then said, the thumb ring is dirty now, so take it as a reward. Don't you want to eat bear paws ah? Another day, this prince will get some for you. 
Do you know how to prepare it? Don't know how however? The head chef at Zenxiu restaurant probably knows how. When the moment comes, let's go eat at the restaurant and have older brother Yang Feng make it for us. We can also order some of their specialities and happily eat a delicious meal together. Ever since her godmother had finished her one month confinement, Yuxiakao spent less time in town nowadays. Her godmother said that she was going to return back to the capital soon in order to prepare for little Lin Lin's hundred day ceremony. His washing ceremony and full moon ceremony were all done in Tanga Town. If she didn't do his hundred days ceremony in the capital, then her godmother's good friends, her godfather's close friends, as well as the declining Xia family that wanted to fawn on General Fang would have all come over to give them their congratulations already. Zhejun Yang's eyes smiled as they roamed around that adorable little face. She described everything happily, as if the bear paws were already within her grasp and all she needed to decide was on how to eat them. Okay, when he had the chance, he probably could go into the mountains to take a look. Perhaps he might really get an unexpected haul there. Yuxia Kao finally finished her thoughts on how to eat the bear paws. She waved the badger in her hands. The bright light from the sun made her smile seem exceptionally brilliant. As she said, without bear paws around, let's eat this guy first. Do you want to eat stewed badger meat or braised? What's your favorite way of preparing it? Zhejun Yang rarely considered other people's likes and dislikes. If he was in his usual frame of mood, he would have said braised without a thought for other people's feelings. Stewing is nutritious, whereas braising has a deeper flavor, both have their advantages. This prince wants to try both. Then I'll stew half and braise the other half. Under the sunlight, there were two figures slowly disappearing in the distance. One was tall, the other short, one was sturdy, the other delicate. One used to be head steward Fu, but the author changed his surname to Liu. 2. Lu Xun, comma one of the earliest and best known modern Chinese writers, chapter 260, Intuition, the time, when the male flowers grew on the corn, was the most crucial part of land management. At this time, all of the leaves on the corn were loose and large and the stalks were thick and sturdy. Only by having that could the kernels grow as large as possible, leading to a good harvest later on. Yuxia Kao had her cheat device, the little divine stone, so none of this was a problem for her. The Yu family's fields were filled with healthy and mature corn stalks. Disease and lack of nutrients were not issues for them. All they were waiting for now was for the female flowers to recede and the male flowers to mature and let pollen loose. Yuxia Kao's family's six mu fields of watermelon were now completely sold out. In total, they managed to make more than 15,000 tls from those fields. Watermelon wholesalers were mostly the few families that had good relationships with them. There were other wholesalers that came from other parts of the country due to the Yu family's reputation, but because there was a limit to how many ripe watermelons there were in a day, they could only get one to two carts of watermelon. Royal Prince Yang would send a few carts back every ten days to pick up melons. He didn't take advantage of the Yu family and bought the watermelons according to their regular wholesale price, large ones for five tls apiece and small ones for three tls apiece. He then hauled them back to the capital, where they could be sold for double their price though with plenty of people lining up to buy some. Prince Jing was being bombarded at every step by his colleagues, who were trying to enter through the back door to buy watermelons, so he took sick leave and went to Tanga Town to recuperate. When the emperor heard of this, he curled his lip and silently cursed the other man. What is this being annoyed by other people are? More likely that he misses his wife too much, right? After more than a year's work on it, the vast majority of basic construction on Prince Jing's manor, which was on the West Mountain, had been completed. On the west side of Dongshan village and in the vicinity to Yuxia Kao's home, there was a long stretch of stone steps that snaked up the West Mountain. Behind the trees in the forest, one could vaguely see the outlines of the red and green glazed roof tiles that glittered under the sunshine. A tall and lofty figure slowly went down those steps. Gradually, the person's appearance became more clear, a face that seemed to be perfectly carved, an exceptionally handsome figure, and a pair of strong eyebrows above a pair of aloof eyes that would occasionally flicker with the icy coldness from an ice age. 
The mountain breeze lightly lifted a few strands of his murky black hair and made his azure blue robes flutter. It was as if the god of war himself was descending from the heavens. At the foot of the mountain was Xiaokao, who finally had some leisure time. Zushanu and some other village girls around her age had successfully pestered her into gathering wild mushrooms with them. It had rained the previous night and all of the wild mushrooms in the soil shot up through the soil. They resembled a glade of tiny umbrellas. Zushanu raised her head and saw the azure figure walking down. She couldn't help but quietly exclaim, Oh look! His Highness the Royal Prince is descending the mountain. He looks too handsome, Zheng Xiaokui, another village girl, clasped her hands over her mouth to muffle a giggle. She teased the other girl, I heard that the Royal Prince isn't married yet and has no concubines. If you fancy him, then have Auntie Zhu send you over to become his concubine, you silly lass. Be careful that I don't rip your mouth apart. Zushanu was older than Xiaokao by a year and was already eleven years old. After a few more years, she could get engaged. Xiaokui's words made Shanu feel simultaneously shy and angry, so she started tickling the other girl. Liu Yingtsai, who was the daughter of Liu Xuanzu, a good friend of the Yu family, quietly whispered into Xiaokao's ears, that royal prince looks so scary. He has a knife-like intensity in his eyes and it makes me tremble to see them. Whoever becomes his wife or concubine would have to stare at that frozen face all day. If they don't get scared to death, then they'll definitely freeze to death. There's one advantage to this. In the summer, he can decrease the temperature around you and cool the air down ah. Kian Wen and Kian Wu's younger sister, Yifang, blinked her eyes in a silly manner as she quipped with a grin. Yuxia Kao covered her mouth with her hands as a pfffttt inadvertently came out. In her eyes, the young royal prince was only a paper tiger. He looked fierce but wasn't scary at all. However, it was only in her midst that Zhejun Yang was able to relax and tolerate her little antics. Master, looks like Miss Yu is over the head steward Liu had sharp eyes and was able to spot Yuxia Kao within the group of girls around her age. He made sure to bring this up to his master. Ever since Zhejun Yang was given the duty of monitoring the crops in Dongshan village, his heartless second brother had escaped. He didn't even say a word before he ran away to enlist in old General Zhao's army at the borders. Consequently, the responsibility of monitoring the construction of the West Mountain Manor fell to Zhejun Yang. Furthermore, Her Highness, the Princess Consort, had sobbed and complained to her youngest son, stating that all of them never cared about their parents' feelings and only cared about themselves. Her complaints covered his second older brother secretly enlisting in the army as well as him going out to sea. All of these had caused a lot of pain and suffering for her. Zhejun Yang, who was the unlucky recipient, felt so haggard from his lady mother's nagging that he used the excuse of completing his official work and left early that morning to escape to Dongshan village. After riding up the West Mountain, he did a quick look around to inspect the progress of the manor's construction and then descended. As he climbed down, he was scheming, trying to figure out what difficult dishes he could order for lunch from that little lass, who was always posturing in front of him. After hearing Steward Liu's prompt, he looked towards the sound of giggles and laughter in the distance. Sure enough, that familiar skinny and weak looking figure was currently bent over and looking for something in the grass. What are you looking for? The dozen or so stone steps that were left were easily traversed by Zhejun Yang. The little girls, who were raucously talking, didn't notice that the topic of their conversation, the young royal prince, was only a few feet away from them. When they heard the sound of that hard, icy voice, the little girls were so scared that they all trembled. They even forgot about their own baskets as they all scampered off. Yuxia Kao straightened herself and looked at the young royal prince who had somehow crept up behind her. She laughed, I thought that there was some ferocious beast coming, but apparently it was you are. Look at you, scaring all of the other girls away. From the corner of his eye, Zhejun Yang faintly looked at the group of little girls who were hiding. Irritation bubbled up within his heart. He addressed Yuxiakao, who was ignoring him while she continued to pick mushrooms, in the future, spend less time with them. All small-minded and petty, not worth the effort. Yuxiakao almost pelted the mushroom in her hand at his face. She looked displeased as she replied, young royal prince, 
you have a lofty status and position. Naturally, us wild commoners are nothing to you. Please keep your distance in order to avoid this commoner's pettiness from sticking to your body. Even if Zhejiang Yang didn't have his special ability, he would be able to tell that Yuxiakao was quite angry. He asked in a puzzled voice, this prince wasn't talking about you, why are you throwing a temper tantrum? Ah? They are all of my friends. If you don't respect them, it's the same as not respecting me. Yuxia Kao puffed up her face and angrily glared at him before she turned around and only let him look at the back of her head. Zijun Yang frowned and then looked in the direction of the little girls again. His ability told him that within that group of girls, there was at least one of them that didn't have pure intentions. He was afraid that that girl would end up influencing or harming Xia Kao, so he wanted to warn her but he didn't know how to explain. Awkward silence prevailed for a bit and then he finally said, you must be cautious when choosing your friends. If you're not, you might end up harming yourself as well as causing problems for other people. When Yuxia Kao noticed that he was being quite serious, she placed the mushroom in her hands into the basket and looked him in the eye. Do you know something? Is there someone in that group who wants to hurt me? Whether or not she'll hurt you, I can't tell at this moment. However, Someone within that group of girls doesn't have pure motives. You need to be careful Zijun Yang was afraid she would end up getting hurt in the end, so he ended up giving her a warning. Them? One of them doesn't have pure motives? Within the group of four girls, three of them were all considered Xia Kao's close friends. Zushanu had a bright and open personality and didn't have any shrewdness. Kian Yufang was the youngest of the group and she was sweet and adorable. Liu Yingtsai had a straightforward personality and acted like their older sister. She was very good at taking care of others. The only girl she didn't know well was Zheng Xiaokui. All she knew was that she was Liu Yingtsai's neighbor and that the other girl had tagged along once she found out Liu Yingtsai wanted to get the wild mushrooms. All of them were young little girls around the age of 10 who among them could have ulterior motives such that word even got into the young royal prince's ears. Yuxia Kao sidled along closer to Zijun Yang and beckoned to him with her hand to have him place his ear closer to her. She quietly whispered into Zijun Yang's ear, Did you hear something from somewhere? No. Zijun Yang felt like his ear was itchy and hurriedly straightened up. He shifted a bit to the side and pasted an icy expression on his face. If someone looked closely at his face, he or she would notice that the tips this handsome youth's ears were slightly red now. Yuxia Kao leveled a glare at him and said, If no one told you anything, then how do you know that one of them doesn't have pure motives? Zijun Yang naturally couldn't tell her about his own strange ability as he was afraid that she would regard him as a freak in the future. He could only earnestly say, Intuition. PFFT, Yuxia Kao almost choked on her own saliva. She laughed as she said, Young royal prince, when did your gender change? Gender change? What do you mean? Zijun Yang had a feeling that this wasn't a good term so he looked at her alertly. Female intuition, female intuition. Naturally, only women will believe their own intuitions. Young royal prince, when did you also become so irrational? Yuxia Kao didn't quite know what to say at this point. When Zijun Yang saw that she didn't take this to heart, he didn't pursue this topic of womanly feelings. He cautiously warned her, if you don't take this to heart, I have to tell you that this prince's intuition has always been very good. By relying on my innate intuition, I've been able to avoid a lot of plots against me. This prince is warning you out of the kindness of my own heart, it's up to you whether you want to believe me or not. Zijun Yang glanced at the group of little girls not far from them. He didn't know what those girls were doing but he could tell that they were gesturing and talking about something. Just who was the culprit that wanted to scheme against Yuxia Kao? He needed to keep a close eye on that unruly little brat. However, he would have never expected that the girl's target wasn't Yuxia Kao but was him instead. Yuxia Kao didn't think she had anything that was worth someone else plotting against her. When she noticed that the young royal prince's mood seemed to be a bit down, she hurriedly interjected, in a moment, I'll go buy a rooster from Auntie Zhu's house. For lunch, I'll make you some chicken stewed with mushrooms along with some flatbread. Although these dishes are examples of country cooking, they taste quite good. Okay. I also want to eat some sour and spicy pig intestines with vermicelli. Zijun Yang liked strongly flavored foods, 
So last time he ate a plate of sour and spicy pig intestines with vermicelli, the dish had numbing, spicy, savory, aromatic, sour and a fatty without being greasy taste. It hit all of his favorite points and since then, he could never forget that dish. Earlier he had worn this little lass out of the kindness of his own heart, yet she laughed it off. Therefore, for lunch, he needed to make things difficult for her, so he ordered a Zenxiu restaurant speciality dish, sour and spicy pig intestines with vermicelli. When she wasn't able to make it, then he would laugh at her. However, he would have never expected that sour and spicy pig intestines with vermicelli was a dish that Zenxiu restaurant had spent 500 tls to get a hold of the recipe. And it was from Yuxiakao herself. At lunch, he devoured the authentic and incredibly delicious sour and spicy pig intestines with vermicelli. Only then did a thought pop up. What sort of relationship does this lass have with Zenxiu restaurant? How come she knows how to make almost all of their special dishes? and make it even more tasty than them. Zhejun Yang, who had been unable to trouble Yu Xiaokao with his requests, started to be picky again. This chicken stewed with mushrooms is such a commonplace dish. If you could switch it for a wild pheasant instead, I'm sure it will taste much better. Tomorrow, this prince will give you a hand and hunt some delicious game for you to make into food. When Yu Hai heard this, how could he possibly let the royal prince get into a possibly dangerous situation? What if royal prince Yang had an accident in the vicinity of Dongshan village? Other than himself, even the entire Dongshan village would be implicated by this R. Ah, 